tempering. Tempering, my least favorite part of this entire process. Today is one of those rough days where it's raining outside. We're not exactly sure why this is happening. The relative humidity is really low, but bars are coming out bad. They look like this, which tells us from the color that it might be too hot. The relative humidity in the room is around 35%, which is really low, but the temperature is very high. So tempering is kind of a mystery. It's really annoying. It's the biggest challenge that we have in our chocolate making process after running a business. That's probably the hardest part is running a business to keep that going successfully and make sure everyone's happy and wheels are turning. But tempering is the hardest of the chocolate making processes and that could potentially be because we're in Hawaii. It's tropical. Great for growing, not as good for chocolate making on the tempering side of things. And so what's happening here is cocoa butter needs to get crystallized into a certain formation using temperature. Steel goes through this and glass goes through this and chocolate goes through this. But all we're working with is cocoa butter. And cocoa butter is made of three acids. It's made of steric, oleric, and palmitic acid. There's different ratios of these three that will affect the tempering. I haven't found too many people who know much about this. And so everybody I ask, I haven't gotten a super good answer. And I want to know more. So if you know more about this, let me know, send me a paper. But we're always trying to figure out and learn more. And this is the really geeky side of things. But when you understand it, you can do a better job at tempering or just making chocolate in general. So let's go into certain analogies of why this works. If you were to take a glass of water and you put sand at the bottom and you were to stir it all up really fast and then freeze it instantly, all that sand and all the water would be pretty uniform in structure. That's what's happening when we temper chocolate. This is why it's strong, why your chocolate bar's got that nice snap, why it's got a good shine on the top instead of this. That's all just the oil separating, crystal structure breaking. Let's use another analogy. Let's, let's pretend there's, let's not pretend. At first, there's six crystals that make up cocoa butter. We want crystal number five, but I want you to think of these six crystals as Lego blocks. And so when we heat the chocolate up and we cool it off and then we warm it up a little bit, all these Lego blocks that were scattered all over the place, they start getting really close, tighter, tighter, closer, closer, to the point where they lock together, but they've also become the same Lego block, the same crystal structure. That's why your chocolate bar's got that really nice snap. That's why it doesn't have this going on. And there's lots of reasons this may go on. And one of them is relative humidity. If it's too high, the cocoa butter oil does not like water. And so if the, there's too much water in the air, you're gonna have weird things going on like this. And the second thing would be uh, latent heat. We've had lots of problems with this. That's when maybe too much heat gets stuck in the chocolate and it can't get released. So in our case, we load refrigerators. We have bakery carts that we put in these double door refrigerators. We slide in the racking. And if we put the bars right on top of each other on these bakery carts, instead of leaving a gap, the heat doesn't escape properly. And you end up with every bar looking like this on the back. And sometimes the top is perfect. So it's something about the heat getting trapped and not being released. So that is latent heat issues and it has to do with airflow. If you get good airflow on it, that should help a lot. So we drilled holes in the side of our refrigerators to let the air flow through the panels better. And that helped us uh, a lot because originally we had no idea what was going on and we asked a lot of questions of some of the right people and we eventually figured some of this out. Another thing is uh, over crystallization. So we used to use a batch temperer. We have a 200 kilo Savage batch tempering machine and we thought that that would work perfectly for doing you, you temper the whole 200 kilos in one batch at one time and then you try and mold the entire batch. The problem is that we don't add soy lecithin and we don't have enough cocoa butter in our chocolate to make this really work for us. We haven't figured it out at least. And so we must have remelted 50,000 chocolate bars one year when we first were, were trying this and it was very frustrating. And so 
we sucked it up we ended up going to a continuous tempering machine which has a hot bowl it gets sucked internally goes up through an auger cooled off to the right temperature and then dispenses a little bit warm through the depositing head before starting that structure again so it's structuralizing the crystals and breaking them and putting them back together and breaking them repeatedly and that allows you to keep molding way longer in the right formation where it doesn't over crystallize which we couldn't see happening in the big batch it just all of a sudden every bar started looking like this and this and so that was a, a huge bummer for us back in the day it made us very sad now we don't have this problem as often because of the continuous tempering machine these are things like in our case we use a, a gammy uh, model probake in, in the united states is what sells them our version is a diva right now just 25 kilos at a time and we deposit from the batch temper into the diva we are getting a scaled up version so that we can do more at a time in one batch and keep milk and dark separated so we don't have to clean out the machines that's kind of a different topic Let's go back to tempering. Uh, Sell me does them, FBM does them. These are batch tempering machines. It's better for craft chocolate. If you add soy lecithin, it probably would make your life way easier. We haven't experimented a lot with it, but from everything I've learned, soy lecithin would prevent a lot of these problems. Since most craft chocolate makers don't add it, I wouldn't even try and mess with batch tempering. Maybe you could uh, talk to Dick Taylor. Those guys seem to have figured it out really well. But that is a. Uh, over crystallization let's talk a bit about color color tells us a lot it tells us if it's maybe too hot or too cold and so this reddish color we're seeing here is indicating that out of our past experience that our numbers that it's dispensing out of is too hot so if we're using say 31 degrees Celsius that may be too hot we need to lower to 30.5 or even 30 every machine is a little bit different your room is uh, going to be different everything affects it. it and variables will change everything so it's not like one number is going to work the number i'm telling you now may not work for your facility but it will work for ours maybe it depends on the day if it's raining it, everything changes so this is a lot more of a cross your fingers and try and understand the science but there's some art to it you got to watch the way the chocolate behaves let's talk about the numbers really quickly in Fahrenheit it's about 115 degrees to 120 would melt all your crystals pretty quick as it gets sucked internally into the machine or maybe on a marble slab as you're moving it around you want to get it down to about 84 degrees Fahrenheit if your chocolate allows it you'll see when you're hand tempering that you may not be able to go that far down before it starts to clump up you don't want to hit that clumping phase because it's almost too late to go back and then you're going to want to uh, warm it up a little bit so what the machine does is the bowl's hot it gets sucked internally and goes through an auger and cooled and it dispenses through the head a little bit warmed when it does that usually it's dispensing around 89 degrees Fahrenheit and that is going to go into each cavity of the mold you're going to be fine most of the time now in Celsius those numbers are uh, around you know so we heat our bowl up to 50 before we start or 55 even that's like a fresh start there's no crystals as you drop it down I think inside the machine it's going to like 28 maybe uh, 29 and then it's dispensed around 30 30.5 those are the numbers that work in our machine in our factory everybody's gonna have to tweak that a little bit but that's tempering for you today was a good day to do this because we're struggling with it uh, as you control your environment more and more that does get better. We have less problems now than we used to because we have just monitors. So I have a little sensor that I can look on my phone and I can see what the relative humidity is in the room at that time. I can see what the temperature is at that time. And one of the reasons maybe the room is too hot. So it's in the low 80s and that is really warm, but the continuous tempering machine helps us with that. It goes straight into the fridge and comes out. So we're still learning. We're still trying to figure it out. I guess it keeps it interesting. So those are some of the reasons your chocolate may be out of temper and it's just a learning experience. Keep trying, keep tweaking, you'll get it. Persistence, persistence and ignorance is worth a lot. <laughs>